Hey traders, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be showing you guys the trades I took on 24th of September 2021, that was a Friday. I will also be answering the most common and the most important question I get that how to know when to stop trading. Because on this day, I went from being nicely green for the day to being small green for the day and I decided to stop after my third trade. In this video, I will be explaining the reasoning why. So make sure that you guys watch this video till the end because you guys can also take a thing or two and learn from my mistakes and the rules I have set to avoid going from green to red for the day. My first two trades for the day were on CRM that I posted on my game plan for our Discord members. And I also mentioned in the pre-market voice webinar that CRM is the stock I'm looking to trade for the break of pre-market high, which was the best trade of the day. And I made 63% winner on this trade. If you guys wanna be part of our Discord group, the link will be in the description box below. Let's now break down the chart of CRM and what is happening on CRM. On Thursday, last week, the day before, the trade was from Friday that I took. On Thursday, there was high volume on it. And the reason for that is because on Thursday, before the market opened, they raised their guidance. So that means the company is expecting to perform better than they were thinking of doing initially. That's why we had a crazy push on CRM on Thursday. On Friday, I was looking for a continuation move towards the upside for the break of pre-market high because the all-time high on CRM, that is 284.5, is very, very near. So the levels I was looking at are the break of pre-market high, which was around the $280 level. And I had my eyes on the break of all-time high, which is 284.5. This is the recording of my first trade of the day. We saw that CRM, this dotted line is the yesterday's high and this dotted line is the pre-market high. We saw that CRM was rejecting from yesterday's high, but we are seeing a lot of green around $279 level. And the thing I love about this uh, stock is that the R wall that right at the top is around 330%, which is the crazy amount of volume on this stock. 330% means that CRM is doing almost three times, 3.3 times the volume it does on a daily basis on an average. That's what I was liking about this stock. So just before the break of $280 level, I got filled 30 contracts. I'm trading same week contracts, same day expiry contracts in fact. I'm trading 280 calls and my fill price was 1.50. When I entered this position around 279.5, I was only risking to the point of $279 level because I knew that a lot of buyers are interested at 279. I'm looking at a lot of green at $279 level. And my first profit target was the pre-market high. That's why at the break of pre-market high around $281, that is the whole dollar level, a good psychological level. I covered 50% of my position, that is 15 contracts at a fill price of 2.16. So that means I made around 40 to 50% winner within the first one minute of market open. As you guys know, I like to be really quick off the open. Most of the times it works in my favor, but a few times like this time it works against me because my last fill price on the last contract was around $5. So if I would have held my whole position for the whole move towards the upside, I would have made most likely for 10 to $15,000 on this position. But again, I'm sticking to my rule because stocks can be very, very volatile off the open. You never know how much a stock can move towards the upside. If should have, would have a bad words to have in trading, I will stick to my plan. My plan was to take 50% off at the break of pre-market high. I stuck to my plan. But in theory, this could have been a 300% winner. Coming to my exits, I will show you guys my exits on a screenshot because I held this trade for like 10, 15 minutes. So the recording will be very, very long. My initial entry was right here before the break of pre-market high. I took 50% of my position out at the break of pre-market high. At the break of $281 level, I covered another 10 contracts at an average fill price of around 2.40. At the next push up, we had a small flag on the one minute chart with low volume, so nothing to be concerned about. On the next push up, I covered another three contracts at an average fill price of around 2.60, but then it was holding the nine EMA and I was only holding two of my contracts. So I wasn't emotionally attached to those two contracts. For those two contracts, my stop loss was the break of nine EMA on the one minute towards the downside. You guys can see it never broke the nine EMA. At the break of 282.5, we had this crazy push towards the upside. And at the break of all time high, I knew that 284.5 is the previous all time high that I broke down earlier in this video. 
At the break of all time high, I covered the rest two contracts at a fill price of 4.62 and 4.90. So you guys can see my last contract was at a fill price of 4.90 and I entered at 1.50. So this was a 300% plus winner if I would have held my whole position, but I can't think like that because in trading, you never know how much a stock can move. And this is the reason I always say that stock market is not supposed to make sense because sometimes you have crazy moves like these paying you 300% what is supposed to make sense is your entry your exit your risk management your trading plan your trading strategy and your journal and everything related to your trading process but stock market is not supposed to make sense and this just proved that in total on this trade i made twenty eight hundred dollars which was a return of around 63 percent of my investment within the first 10 minutes of market open this is my second trade on crm on my first trade my exit was right here and it broke to 85 dollars level as well so i was still eyeing crm for an entry on the pullback because i was expecting after a consolidation it might continue towards the upside that's why after this initial move up, it was making this triangle with $283 level as support. And there was a big buyer as well at $283 that I could see on the book map, which is the application I used to see big buyers and big sellers. At the hold of 283.5, I got filled 10 contracts at a fill price of 3.80. On this trade, I'm trading next week contracts because I'm not willing to risk a lot of my profits on this trade. On the pullback to $283 level, according to my plan, my plan was to add to my position because especially I'm trading next week contracts, so the risk is not a lot compared to if you're trading the zero day to expiry contracts. I added 20 more contracts at a fill price of 3.50. On this trade, in total, I was slightly in the money. The premiums went to around $4, but I was expecting the break of this flag and continuation towards the upside. That's why I held on to my position. But suddenly we saw buyers take control here and I got stopped out at the break of $283 level towards the downside. I got out with a loss of around $1,500 on this trade, which was a loser of around 15%. Not that bad because especially I was trading the next week contracts. That's why the loser was not that bad. My third trade of the day, that was my final trade of the day was on Tesla, which was again a loser. If you guys trade Tesla and if you guys watch Tesla like me every single day, you guys know Tesla moved like crazy on Friday all of a sudden. That was unexpected move on Tesla. It moved from $753 level straight to $765 level. I missed this initial move up, but I was waiting for a consolidation and waiting for my entry. Let's go back to the one minute chart now and look at my entries and exits. Tesla made quick flag patterns here, here, but it was too extended to my liking because the five minutes was very, very extended from the moving averages. Then on a nice pullback to $762 level when I could see this level is holding right here and I could see 762 stepping up and the buyers are stepping up around $762 level. I got filled 20 contracts. I was trading 765 calls, same week expiry, same day expiry contracts and I was expecting 762 to hold. Similar to my last trade, on this trade also, the premiums went to around 2.80. I was slightly in the money, but I was expecting the flag to break and a continuation move towards the upside. I would have taken my profits, a few of my contracts out at 765, but suddenly we saw a big seller step up and there was a big red candle. I got stopped out at a fill price of 2.17. I wanted to get out at around 2.30, 2.35, but I was not able to get filled because the volume was pretty high on this candle. And if you're trading same day expiry contracts, those premiums can be very, very volatile. I tried to exit at the bid a couple of times. Finally, I got filled at 2.17, overall losing $500 on this trade, which is still not bad, losing $500 on 20 contracts, on zero day to expiry contracts on Tesla after this huge push towards the downside, it's pretty good. So I was able to manage my risk on this position. If I go back and review this trade, this is by far not one of my best trades because the ATR of Tesla is around 22 to $25 for the day. ATR means average true range, how much a stock moves on an average on a daily basis. I recently made a video explaining the day trading indicators I used on a daily basis. The link will be somewhere around here but Tesla was around its ATR for the day. It had already moved around $21 for the day. 
I should not have taken this trade, but Tesla is a stock that can really move for the day if it gets the volume. I have seen Tesla move $40, $50 for the day if it gets the volume. So it's a stock that can move past its ATR if it gets the volume and it breaks a technical level. 760 was a critical level. The good thing I did on this trade, on the other hand, is that I entered on the pullback. This is what I like to do. If a stock is very extended on the daily, on the five minutes, on the one minute chart, I like to enter on the pullback because the breakouts don't really work if I would have taken it here I would have lost a lot of money if, if I would have taken at the break of high of the day right here I would have lost a lot of money that's why if a stock is very extended I like to enter on the pullback so I did not chase this stock I missed my initial entry which is okay I entered on the pullback I accepted the risk and then I moved on before I explain when you should stop trading as a trader how to know when to stop trading let's look at my PL statement on my first trade on CRM, I made $2,800. On my second trade on CRM, I lost $1,500. On my third trade, that was the final trade of the day, I lost $500. Overall, ending the day with $753 in the green. And this was a Friday, so I'm thankful that my whole week from Monday to Friday was green. And especially because we had FOMC week. We had the Fed meeting. I was able to manage my risk. I was able to control my emotions and score a 5 out of 5 green week. Now coming to the answer to the question, how to know when to stop trading? The answer is very, very simple. Everyone, every single one of you knows this answer when you can't afford more risk. This applies to if you are red for the day, if you are green for the day. For example, you have max stop loss for the day. Your max stop loss is $100. That means you can't afford losing more than $100 for the day. Same applies to when you are green. I was green $2,800 for the day. I accepted the risk on my next two trades, but I was not willing to accept more risk. If you guys haven't seen my monthly recap video that I posted about my August PNL, you guys don't know my risk management. My risk management is like if I'm green for the week, if I'm green for the month, if I'm green for the day, I will be able to risk more money to make more profits because you won't ever be able to make $10,000, $50,000 by sticking to your profit. You have to risk your money to make money. I was green $2,800 for the day. I think the next two trades were not really good, but they were not that bad as well. I could have made $5,000 on my Tesla winner as well. So I accepted the risk. I might lose $500. I might make $2,000. So trading is all about risk to reward. But after my third trade, I was not willing to accept more risk because I went down from $2,800 to $700 in the green. Old Jay, maybe from a year ago, would have kept on trading and went red for the day. I have done that. I'm telling you from my experience, I have been green $5,000 for the day, and then I have lost $5,000. I have ended up $3,000 in the red in 2020. I remember that day. That's why as a trader, it's an ever learning journey. You need to learn from your mistakes. That's what I am doing. So the simple answer is, when you can't afford more risk, stop trading. Tesla on the same day went to $775. I could have made $5,000 more, but the answer comes down to I was not willing to accept more risk. I was not willing to go from green to red for the day. That's why I turned off my platform. I opened up YouTube and I started watching my own videos. That's it guys. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for a lot more content on day trading. If you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure that you follow me there. I post a lot of good day trading content, including my PNL on Instagram as well. The link will be in the description box below. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.